There's my dog. <laughs> Hello. 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 This is Lynn Terry, group admin for you. And um, I wanted to pop on here. I have Julie with me of WomenOnKeto.com. <laughs> So we're testing out um, some new software where we can be side by side and, and have a conversation. And so we thought we'd come in here and test it because we're actually talking about keto stuff. And Julie and I, um, I guess we've run into each other before and I've been in her group for a while, but um, we hadn't really got to know each other until recently. So we um, jumped on the phone and it turned out like we had all this fun stuff to talk about. And um I thought it would be fun to bring that conversation to you guys as well. So I'm moving some stuff around here so I can so I can see if you leave a comment or anything. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just leave a comment and we'll do our best to answer them now or later when we get off live, either or. Anyway, so this is Julie of WomenOnKeto.com. And um, like I said, we jumped on the phone the other day and we just about couldn't shut up. <laughs> we had so right? much fun stuff to talk about. <laughs> And um, so we just kind of want to start off. Most people know um, in this group here, since I run it, that I've been keto for almost eight years and um, that I stay keto even when I got way below my goal weight, which was not comfortable, but I stay keto to stay out of chronic pain. So um, there are different people that are at different places with why they eat low carb, how they eat low carb, what's important to them about it. Um, for me specifically, it's an anti-inflammatory diet. It's a, you know, it's a uh, therapeutic nutrition for me. Um, other, and, and, but it's, at the beginning, though, I just started to lose weight. That's the reason I started keto, which and I started on Atkins induction, which is Atkins phase one, the original Atkins diet. And that is keto, 20 net carbs max. And um, that was almost eight years ago. I lost the weight. I started feeling good. I was like, I haven't felt good in years. <laughs> and, um, and so that's why I've continued for this long is to um, maintain an active lifestyle. For the first time in my adult life, I can water ski and hike and rock climb and do things I, I couldn't before because I was in so much pain. Anyway, so I'm curious, Julie, um, how long you've been keto or low carb and um, what was your big reason for starting? Like, what was it that, that made you think, I'm, I'm going to start this particular way of eating? Yeah, so I've been doing it for well over a year, and honestly, I, I need to really track this time-wise, but I know it's been well over a year. Casually, I've been doing it for several years. I started off really slow um, by eliminating sugars and grains, but then I slowly moved into more and more a ketogenic diet. Um, no, wait a minute. Are you saying you yep. eased into it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. How? I did. I don't know. What, how yeah. did you manage well, to do that? And I'm asking this because yeah. I was a bench eater and I was an awful eater before I went keto. And so for me, like the idea of just having less cookies or just cutting out one thing, like, um, like, I, like, does it sound cravings, like torture? <laughs> my cravings were so strong. And okay. so for me, I had to like jump all in. I had to like pick a day and say, this is the day my whole life changes. The way I eat changes. Because like by day three, you no longer have cravings. It kills your appetite. You know, you have hardly any appetites. A natural appetite suppressant. Let me say it right. Anyway, yeah. um, so it actually does the work for you. So what do you just have like the willpower of Superman or what? <laughs> well, I did it like by eliminating, like starting by eliminating breads, which is so easy. You know, eliminating breads, like you don't really need bread in your life. And then like pastas and that kind of thing. And then uh, like sugar. <laughs> um, but then I did, I know that because I have an autoimmune con condition and I used to have to take immunosuppressants um, every day. And since I have started the ketogenic life, I don't need to take in immunosuppressants anymore. So that's a big motivator for me. But it's, it's, uh, it's, to go from like zero to keto for me personally, um, I am not good at like sitting down and reading books and <laughs> studying things and then going into it. I like to kind of like back my way into things, if you know right. what I mean. So it's interesting you say that because I didn't, I, I've never actually read a keto book. Unless you count page 69 oh. and 70 of the Southern Keto Cookbook. Those two pages of that. Oh, <laughs> That'll be the 
the keto biscuits and gravy. I know, because you can get so much information from the internet, so you almost need to. I I highly recommend you do zero research, because you will just be so overwhelmed in five minutes. Because everybody does it differently. I think the key to it is, like, just keep it simple. So um, I, what I tell people who are just starting out, uh, and they'll ask questions like, you know, should I be fasting? And what about the nitrate in my bacon? And I'm like, you're overthinking it. Just like <laughs> 29 hey, max, max, sure. just keep it simple. Because I did a lot of things wrong when I first started, but I still lost uh, eight pounds in 10 days and 23 pounds in the first seven weeks, which was quite a bit. And, um, and I was, you know, eating low carb junk food. So I just, all I knew was 20 net carbs max. So if I ate a pound of bacon dipped in mayonnaise for chips and dip, (laughs) or if I was living on Atkins bars and quest bars and basically, you know, replacements for the things that I was eating before, um, then, and then that's how I did it. That's how I managed to make that transition. I bought low carb bread. And let me just tell you the first low carb bread I bought tastes like dirt. And I think I would have rather gone outside and licked my yard than eat this. And it was so expensive because, you know, by the time you pay for it to get shipped to you and like it's expensive anyway, I think I spent like 30 bucks on this loaf of dirt. It was so bad. And oh. the company ended up getting like sued or having some legal trouble for, you know, not being um, labeled correctly. And so I had a lot of, you know, bad experiences and I did a lot of things I would say wrong Um, that's not keto or however you want to do it. Um, but I still had great results. I still lost eight pounds in 10 days. I still lost 23 pounds in seven weeks. I ultimately got into ketosis and out of pain. And it wasn't until I was a lot further along in my journey, dealing with binge eating, dealing with, um, roller coaster, like mindset issues and things like that, that I really became more health conscious and ingredient conscious. Um, so I think it's okay for people to just, jump in and do it however they do it as long as they're you know doing 20 net carbs um only and i only say that because most people are coming from such a horrible diet they can't help but have good results yeah <laughs> like me <laughs> yeah i used to i used to be one of those people that avoided fats at all costs and and then it was really freaky to introduce fat into my diet again and when i did i just a light went off and I was like, Oh my gosh, is this what it feels like? Cause this feels great. I just, I felt like a hundred percent better. Yes. <laughs> so, because yeah, the there was a calmness source. came over me or something. I can't articulate it very well, but it just, it feels different to ha- have good fats in my diet. Well, it's because it's the energy source. So yeah. it's kind of like if you have, and I'm Southern, so I like pickup trucks. And um, men that drive them, it's nice. But anyway, um, so so it's like if you have a truck that runs on fuel or runs on diesel, you know, just regular gas or diesel, it's two completely different things. So your body has the capacity to run on glucose, carbs and sugar, or run on healthy fats, either or, but not both. So Mm -hmm. the, the real killer is when you combine carbs and fats which was my problem prior to going keto, I ate all the fat and the carbs. <laughs> so I always had a high fat diet. So that part didn't bother me at all. I'm like slather on the mayonnaise and butter and, oh, and you want to know, like in the beginning, I used country crock margarine, the stuff in the tub, because growing up, when someone said, get the butter out of the fridge, that's what I, that's what I knew as butter. That's all I knew as butter. I don't know that I'd ever seen a stick of butter. Maybe. Um, and so there were a lot of things to learn, but, but it's still keto. It's still zero carbs, margarine. So, you know, I try to like, um, I try to be real easy on people who are just kind of coming into the diet and say, you know, transition in however it takes, you know, if you need to eat, you know, Atkins bars or quest bars or, you know, replacement type foods or whatever, whatever it takes to make that transition, because that transition was like, my stepping stone to the great life that I have now. Yeah, yeah. It... So speaking of, we were talking about our preferences, like about macros and ingredients. Like I'm a macro junkie. I count everything. 
I'm like, I got my nose in my fitness pal and I'm like, you know, like I'm very OCD about my macros. And you said you're more uh, particular about ingredients. Ingredients, yeah. Now for me, it's important for me to stay in ketosis. So I'm pricking my finger. I'm actually testing foods. So if, even if a food says it's low carb and it, it looks good on paper, um, I'm testing it, you know, for blood glucose um, spikes. Is it spiking my blood, blood sugar? So that's important to me is to be in ketosis and to have the right macros. But you have like certain ingredient preferences. So tell me like what are some of the ingredients you know for sure that you avoid? Well, um, I just I avoid all the like the sugars, um, the grains, um, fruits. And, uh, I mean, I, every once in a while I'll eat something that has a little bit of that in it. And, um, and if I go overboard, I can definitely feel it for me. I just, my, my body, my brain is my litmus test. I can feel it. Like it, it's almost like for me, when I leave ketosis, it's like I'm walking out of a movie theater and it's still daylight outside. It feels like that. It, it just feels like, whoa, you know. Like disoriented. Um, uh, sorry? Disoriented. Yeah, yeah, so, it's very unpleasant. Yeah, it's interesting you describe it that way. I've never heard it described that way because I got knocked out of ketosis this past weekend. And now I have to retest because I do a six-day clean test every time I test a product. But I had company, and we were baking this, that, and everything. And I was watching, and I was freaking my finger, and I was watching what was spiking my blood glucose levels and what wasn't, you know. But something knocked me out of ketosis, and I'm pretty sure I know what it is. But I'm so I am so strict with my testing that I will do. I have to wait till I get back into baseline levels. I eat mono meals, super clean, like eggs, pecans, beef, just super clean for 72 hours. Then I'll test this food again and eat clean again for another 72 hours. Because in the process of the 72 hours prior to, I had had two other questionable products that seemed to do okay testing-wise, but still, for women, it actually, it takes at least 72 hours for you to fully metabolize anything you eat. And uh, we are yeah. all so different. The bio-individuality of each of us in terms of how long does it take for a food you eat that to spike your sugar levels, that your blood sugar levels, how long does it take for it to tank your ketone levels? So your blood sugar responds first, ketones respond a lot slower. And so so because of that, I do a six-day clean test. Well, you know, sometimes you're just, let's say you get your keto crate box. You get that also? Yes, I yeah. love my keto crate. Yes. So <laughs> let's say that you just take a bite out of everything in the box, which could be anywhere from 8 to 13 products or more, right? And you're yes. like, I just want to try a bite of everything. And if you get knocked out of ketosis, you have no way of knowing what it is. Or if in the course of three days you eat three different things that you hadn't really had before and you get knocked out of ketosis, you're really just guessing if you say, oh, it was that. So I'm sorry, can you, I, you broke up there for a second. Just saying that you're really just guessing a lot of the time unless oh. you're doing like a really strict clean test, you know, in terms yeah. of how things are affecting your body. So yeah. let's talk ingredients because I know that, um, we, I think we were in your group when some questions or comments, <coughs> pardon me, came up about ingredients. So one, like for example, let's say the ingredient was brown sugar or cane sugar. Your response? I mean, if it's if it's a trace amount, it's, I, for me personally, and I know some people are more sensitive, but for me personally, it's not, it's not a problem if it's really low on the ingredient list. I think one of the things I do that does help me ha keep my um, insulin resistance really, really low is I, I intermittent fast. Mm. I think that mm -hmm. helps a ton. If I didn't do that, I, I don't know if I'd react the same way. But if, it, if there's a very little amount of sugar in it, it's, it's not a problem for me. Yeah, it's an interesting thing because some people are like have an immediate that's not keto response. So yeah. I bought some um, ham the other day. It was Bob Evans brand. <coughs> Pardon me. So recovering from the flu. Anyway, so I had bought some ham. It's zero, zero carbs. We're talking total carbs, not net carbs, just zero carbs. And it's um, oh, 
it's really it's really good actually and so anyway it's really high sodium but it was like zero carbs but one of the ingredients was brown sugar so I tested this it doesn't increase my blood sugar um, my blood glucose levels it doesn't knock me out of ketosis it doesn't have enough brown sugar in it to even count as one gram or one carb so it's not enough so I haven't announced this publicly yet so here we go um, prior to that, three days prior to that, I ordered my favorite salad from the barbecue place. And it's called the Pigs in the Garden Salad. And let me just tell you, this thing is beautiful. And it is this beautiful box of like mixed greens, all kinds of beautiful mixed greens. It has cucumbers and tomatoes, which I picked out because it's not the time of year to enjoy those. And, um, <laughs> and then it's topped with pulled pork and bacon. And they have this house-made ranch and it's delicious. So anyway, um, I have eaten this salad a lot over the years. You know, I get it all the time. But I had not been blood testing until, I don't know, the last six or seven months. Yeah, you test your blood. You're not just doing the breath test or the urine test. You're doing the blood test. Blood test, right. Yeah, that's I so much have it, like right here in case I need to prick my finger now. <laughs> yeah, that's the real deal. Yes. And so anyway, um, so anyway the salad spiked my blood sugar to diabetic levels. It shot up like crazy. So my baseline blood sugar levels are between 79 and 85, typically about 85, sometimes as low as 79, usually at 85. And it, it was over 130, like within the hour of eating the salad. So I actually, I actually tested myself while I was sitting here at the table before I ate the salad and tested myself an hour later and I was shocked. So I called the barbecue place and just said, um, I had a blood sugar spike and just need to know if there's anything in the pulled pork, plain with no sauce, if there's anything in it. And they said, oh yeah, brown sugar. So same ingredients, but it's the amount of it. And it, it, the funny thing is it tasted sweet. So I was sitting here and I was eating with a friend. I'm like, this tastes so sweet. And I kept thinking maybe it's because I was, I was still sick with the flu and I had it and my taste buds were all off. But I was like, this really tastes sweet to me. And boy, can you ever taste sugar when you're keto. <laughs> right? Yeah, you taste every little bit, don't you, though? <laughs> yes. And anyway, um, but I ate it, and that's why I tested, you know, because um, I just kind of had this, like, hit about it. Anyway, that was very interesting. So it's not the ingredient itself. It's the amount. It's the carb count. You know, Dr. Westman, I don't know if you know Dr. Eric Westman. Mm -hmm. He co-authored the new Atkins New You book about 10 years ago, I think. And I like him. He's so simple. He's, he does 20 total carbs. So that doesn't leave room for, you know, like really like high fiber stuff that's added in to make the net carb count really low. You know, I, like oh, like, that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> when you start doing curious, net carbs. I'm actually curious about one of those ingredients called inulin that let's say for example in a Lily's chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. Yum. <laughs> it's I'm not, like yeah, not familiar. Um, I need to research that a little. Lily's um, yeah. Lily's chocolate. Oh, my yeah. The, it, yeah. It, yeah. I don't I don't feel any ketosis um, get getting knocked out of ketosis when I eat that, but I also don't sit down and eat a whole bar as I'm sure you don't either. No. Half a serving at the most. Yeah. Yeah. So a serving is 40 grams, I think, and I might eat 20 grams. And that would be, for me, quite a bit of chocolate, I feel like. Yeah. I, really I mean, chocolate. yeah, you get sensitive to a lot of sweets. <clears throat> Just a little nibble of chocolate really hits the spot when yes. you have a little sweet tooth. And <laughs> Just a little as sweet tooth. That. <laughs> yes. yeah. But I think that's, you know, one of the things that makes this a sustainable diet, a sustainable way of eating, is that you can have chocolate. You know, you can have, uh, they make low-carb chips now, or you can cook your own, or, you know, there's lots of different things you can do and stuff. And uh, for me, like being eight years in, you know, if, if you're going to tell me you will never, ever have a blueberry muffin again for the rest of your life, and say goodbye to donuts, I would just go ahead and just jump off the bridge, you know. <laughs> just, don't say that. So, um, they, but they make these things now and there's recipes now and there's ways to replace the foods. And I actually prefer the stuff that I'm eating now. So I have this recipe that I make. It's so easy for blueberry waffles, for example, or for, you know, muffins or anything like that. I made some cream cheese frosting the other day, um, off the Swerve website. 
It was just, uh -huh. they just had a cream cheese frosting recipe that I did and it was really nice. And I thought, Ooh. why would I ever eat the other stuff? You know, like, yeah, you don't miss it. You, you get all the right. Yeah. You could match those tastes and textures. So yeah. why bother eating that other yeah. stuff? Actually, the food I'm eating now is so much better. Yeah. Like instead I, of like, instead of a Sonic burger, I'm having a ribeye. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that's the real thing. Yeah. I'm the only thing I notice now, though, is I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, and that's probably what I should have been doing all this time. I, I Buying all these prepackaged goods isn't so great for me. <laughs> so. Yeah, see, I don't cook. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Although I did make something this morning in the skillet. If you call if you call that cooking. <laughs> yeah, that that's cooking. Yeah. <laughs> but it, and you figured out but you've broken the system. You figured out how to get all those whole foods without cooking and you're my hero. <laughs> yes. I also you know, it's it's different too because my children have left home. So I have an empty nest. So when I first started low carb, the children still lived at home and I still did quite a bit of cooking. But by the time I started low carb, they were teenagers and they had opposite schedules. We all three did. And um, a lot of times they would cook for themselves, you know. But when I did cook a meal, it was so easy to put it together. Um, you know, so I'd make crab legs, which is a family favorite. I make great crab oh. legs. <laughs> and um, then I would make steamed broccoli. I would put in like, you know, garlic bread and baked potatoes. Those, those could go in the microwave, garlic bread in the oven. That's like five minutes. But I would make a Caesar salad and just put all the dressings on the table for them to add croutons and dressing themselves. And so I would have, you know, as much crab legs and butter as I wanted and then steamed broccoli and, um, and Caesar salad with no croutons. And the whole family was very happy with that. <clears throat> you know, that. so I always found it was very easy just to make a meat and green and add a, you know, if I wanted to a add meat and green. A meat and green, yeah. So add yeah. a meat and green, and then I could easily add a starch for the kids, you know, if because you know they eat however however they want. So, or they could do it. You know, my daughter could come in the kitchen and make creamed potatoes, you know, to go with if I was making a beef roast with with uh, roasted broth or roasted asparagus or something. You know, so it it worked out really well and very simple. I didn't find that it was a huge lifestyle change for me in any way. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm finding the same thing with my family. My, my husband still likes his occasional noodles and potatoes. So I, I can make that on the side and still enjoy the, the dish that we're having. Just yeah. eat the starches. Yeah. Or get him in the kitchen and say, Hey, come make these noodles for me. And then you can like, you know, turn on some music and dance across the linoleum. And oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like what you think. <laughs> Yes, because I make two things in the kitchen, and one of them is coffee. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm teaching you every morning. Every morning, coffee and collagen. I, I have to have collagen. I'm I'm hooked now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's really good for you. Um, that's something I, I like the collagen um, in some of the products I use, which is like a chocolate shake, a vanilla shake, and um, two bone broths that I use have collagen in them already. But um, so that company also makes a good, clean collagen. So I was thinking of getting that as well and starting to put it in my coffee. Lately, I've been uh, putting. Lately, I've been putting a liquid MCT that's C8 and C10. It's straight C8 and C10. I have no idea what that is, but apparently, it's really great. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I've just been pouring that in my coffee about once a day. Um, there are a lot of benefits to that. From floating from the to the top, do you do anything to keep, or do you, you just keep stirring it as you drink it? You get like the nice lip gloss when you. Yeah, it's a nice <laughs> lip gloss. It does make it does make your lips nice. Um, actually, I have a shaker cup, you know, like for when you want to make a shake or whatever, and I'll just put my coffee in that and put the lid on it. And it's kind of winter time, so my coffee gets cold e easy anyway. But I just find, you know, I just kind of give it a little shake before I sip it. That's a good solution. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps my coffee warmer in the winter time. So, um, so back to ingredients, inulin is one that I'm going to research. That's kind of next on my list because apparently it has a lot of health benefits, like some kind of like prebiotic fiber, gut health benefits, oh. or I don't know what, but I don't like the idea that my serving of candy is 20 something total carbs because Dr. Eric Westman really got, my, really got my mind thinking, you know, about 
you know, total carbs versus net carbs. And to be honest with you, for the most part, my total carbs are really not that high unless I'm testing products or reviewing products, you know, keto products. For the most part, it's just meat and greens and berries. I have incorporated berries in very yeah. small amounts. And I'm like strict about it. I'm like <laughs> the same way I test. I weigh it out on the scale. It's 18 grams, one eighth of a cup. Okay, you weigh it. <laughs> uh, weigh it on the scale, yes. And it has to be like, it's 18 grams, that's it. And it's very low carb, very low glycemic index, but the more colorful berries like raspberries and blueberries have so many health benefits. Um, they're on phase two of Atkins, so they're not you know far up the list. Phase two of Atkins would be like 40 net carbs a day. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I add them in to my total, you know, my total count, but they don't come out too much. Like my blueberries, you know, <coughs> one small serving like that might be um, two carbs or one net carb. They're very low. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you're you're very uh, scientific about um, measuring your ketosis, and that's great for everybody else who want to know: Can I have this? You know, can I can I eat this bacon or this? Um, Bob Evans uh, meat, so that you you're doing everybody a favor by it, <laughs> by doing it's that. It's good. It's good stuff to know because yeah. I think it's important to know what you're eating. And I learned the hard yeah. way. You know, like one of my I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, but learning the hard way. I mean, that's the way to do it. I knew nothing about ketosis, but for example, um, I was in an airport. I travel a lot. I'm low carb traveler, and um, I was in an airport and I was. I was hungry. I was I was ready to eat something, and there was a Subway, and they have all kinds of low carb options. But I choose the meatball sub without the bread. <laughs> I think I'm making a really great choice. But it right. turns out just the meatballs alone were like twenty something carbs because they have breading in them and different other uh -huh. stuff. Darn. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is I didn't. I looked it up when I got home instead of beforehand. So I've gotten in the habit of always looking things up beforehand. I Google map things so I know where I'm going, what my options are along the way. Um, and if, if I stop here, I'll get this. If I stop there, I'll get that. And I look these things up in advance. So I found out, like for example, I had a low carb meetup in Charlotte recently and we met at Outback Steakhouse, I believe, Outback Steakhouse. So the, was it Outback or Longhorn? It was Outback. Anyway, they had a great steak, but their broccoli is 14 net carbs. Wow. That's what I is said. That? I'm like, what is in your broccoli that's not in mine? <laughs> yeah. It turns out they put a vegetable butter on it. Oh, why? Oh, that oh, could be, but you wouldn't know unless you looked it up, you know? So the interesting thing about this is going back to ingredients, whether they're keto friendly or not keto friendly, um, so I go, um, so I didn't order that broccoli for obvious reasons. I ordered the yeah. asparagus. But if you don't look it up beforehand, then you end up with this surprise, you know? Right. And then, like you said, you're walking out of the movie theater, like all disoriented, like what just happened to me? Yeah. And, um, that's what happened to me a few days ago when I got knocked out of ketosis. I had a lot of work to do this week and I've been like walking around in circles in a daze. Like, I'm like, I can't even focus here. Yeah, it yeah it messes with your focus too. Yeah, yes. I I can't believe how much better I can focus ever since I got on this diet. I mean, I used to have I'm sure I was ADD before, and now I'm like I'm on it. I'm I'm way more focused. It is good, you know. They call it keto clarity. You know, the yeah. brain fog is lifted. You know that kind of thing. Um, I think for me, like I still make mistakes. I made one recently that really concerned me because I did it publicly. I recommend and recommended the meal and everything. And then in hindsight, I was like, there could have been like diabetics and epileptics and other people who went and ate that food that I said was so good. And it took me a couple of days to realize that it knocked me out of ketosis and it was Domino's plain wings, plain wings and not breaded nothing and I was eating them they're literally just chicken wings crispy skin chicken wings you know yeah and anyway I felt really bad the next day and couldn't figure out why I tested myself and I was completely out of ketosis I went back on the website which I normally always do in advance but these were plain wings that's literally what they're called 
and right. there's a little plus button and I clicked it and it dropped down an entire paragraph of ingredients. They were 14 net carbs for just chicken. I don't know if they marinated it or what they did because there was no ingredients like on the chicken, no seasoning, no rub, no nothing, no sauce, no breading, nothing. So it had to be like a marinade or something. Anyway, um, and it was a lot of crap ingredients, but I should have known that beforehand because I know better. I know to look things up in advance now. But the interesting thing um, about it was it wasn't the carb count. It was some specific ingredients or a combination of ingredients. Because even eating that, I still was within range to be in ketosis carb count wise. So ingredients do matter. It's just they matter differently to different people. And they also matter, you know, like um, in, in amounts, I guess. But are there any other like ingredients? Like for example, I think cane sugar came up in a recent discussion. Is that one that you would avoid even in smaller amounts? Or um, for me personally, um, I I'm not affected if I have a little bit of cane sugar. I mean, I I avoid it as much as I can. But if it sneaks into an ingredient somewhere and it's really low, um, I I don't avoid it, especially if I'm out and about, you know, right. um, it, somehow I, I don't get thrown out of ketosis by, a, you know, a very small amount of sugar. Yeah, I think that's, that's the important thing. A lot of people, like, for example, the, um, there's nut butter packets that I love They're by F-bomb. <coughs> all of them are all natural, organic only. They don't use any artificial ingredients, including artificial sweeteners. So the majority of them, the one I just ate, was macadamia coconut. So it's literally oh, um, dry roasted macadamia nuts and organic coconut are the only ingredients. And sea salt, I think. That's it. It is the cleanest food I've ever eaten in my life. Anyway, I, I use these on the go all the time. When I'm hiking, I can put a 1,000 calories in my back pocket in case I want to go play and have fun for a while. When I'm traveling, when I'm on a plane, they're just so convenient. Anyway, um, one flavor out of everything on their site has chocolate. It's called the salted chocolate macadamia. And it's not sweet. I mean, none of their products are sweet. They're very natural. Anyway, um, it has, no, and so people complain about this one a lot because the ingredient in it is cane sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a list of ingredients, right? It's like it's, the last ingredient. No, it's not actually an ingredient. It's an ingredient uh -oh. of an ingredient. Because oh. <laughs> the chocolate they use, the chocolate they use is organic chocolate. Ah, okay. So they're all organic, you know, um, non-GMO, vegan, they're all that stuff. No artificial ingredients whatsoever. So they use organic chocolate and they fully disclose by expanding out on their label the ingredients of the organic chocolate, which most companies don't do. Right. Yeah. So anyway, this one, one or two net carbs for the packet of nut butter. So it's not, and there's no added sugar or anything like that. Anyway, those test great. Blood sugar levels, ketone levels, you know, those test great, no problem whatsoever. It's an ingredient of an ingredient. Um, the majority of the carbs in that are, I mean, there's the, the little bit of organic chocolate. It's not real chocolatey. There's macadamia nuts, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but people will say, you know, that's not keto, which I find very interesting because do you know there's three servings of sugar in it? In, I mean, three grams of sugar in a serving of broccoli. Now, it's naturally occurring, of course, right. but it's also but naturally it's occurring in organic chocolate. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Right. Uh, so what, what is the, what is the uh, tool that you use to check your um, blood ketone levels? It's a Keto Mojo. Keto Mojo, okay. So I have, a, I have a discount link for it. Um, so any, any of you guys who are watching along, um, if you're interested in the, um, the nut butter packets, they're called F-bombs. Just leave a comment that says F-bomb. And it stands for fat bomb, by the way. Anyway, so um, leave a comment that says F-bomb. I have a 20% off discount link for those. Um, if you're interested in the Keto Mojo, which is my uh, blood glucose and ketone testing kit, I have a 15% off discount link for that. They're really generous with their discounts for... Uh, for my group, but this is the little this is the little thing. It's kind of like it doesn't glare well or whatever. Anyway, or it glares too well. I don't know. It has a weird. I mean, and if you're staying in ketosis, then it's 
it could be considered ketogenic. Yes, and that's the important thing that I need to know. Mm -hmm. Like I need, I I have to have foods I can eat on the go. You know, because yeah. I'm traveling a lot or I'm on the go a lot. So I have to have things I can eat on a road trip, things that are sustainable that don't necessarily require refrigeration or preparation. So with if I'm, um, you know, I drove like 16 hours round trip recently in the car or if I'm hiking 10 miles, you know, it's not like I'm packing a stove and a refrigerator. Yeah, you can't bring a kitchen with you in the car. <laughs> no, not unless I go RV, in which case, what's the point? You know, the road trip is about, you know, like, throw it back in the car and let's go, you know? Yeah. And um, anyway, so I need foods like that. And so for me, the testing is very important because it is when I'm traveling that I most need to be in ketosis. Because otherwise, like being on the road that long or flying across the country or I've been to Australia five times, the very first time I flew to Australia, they tried to fly in a medic halfway over the Pacific because my legs swelled so big. It was oh. ridiculous. I mean, my ankles, I couldn't even get my shoes on for three days once I got to Australia. And it's, you know, circulation, inflammation, I have a lower back injury. And that was pre-keto. <laughs> So now I can fly as long as I'm in ketosis, I can fly without swelling at the feet and legs and without circulation problems. Um, so when I'm driving or flying, this is incredibly important. That is the one time when I need the convenience foods, but I also need to be in ketosis for health reasons. So, I mean, if I get, you know, if I get tightened up in chronic pain and I'm eight hours away from my chiropractor or my doctor on the road somewhere, that's not a good thing. Not a good thing. <laughs> so it's important for me to to know what I can take and what's safe. What what else do you carry with you when you're on the road? Um, there's shakes that I like by Ketology. I have a discount code for those too. Um, they are super convenient because they now it's hard to like travel with powder and like through an airport, <laughs> even if you put it in a checked bag. Really, a powder. Have, they're going to rip that bag apart. This shake. No mix. way. Even if it's sealed. Yeah. I mean, cause it's a container, a big container of powder, you know? Like. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I've put it in my checked luggage before and that was fun. When I got my luggage at the other end, I could tell they had fun with it. Anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> oh no. Anyway. So now though they make individual packets or sachets. So I take those in my carry-on. I pull them out with my liquids. When I go through security, they just scan them, and it's all good and fine. And so I carry those. The nut butter packets are great uh, for road trips. They do well at airport security also. They do um, okay for okay, security. Mm -hmm. Nuts. Um, I like pecans, macadamia nuts, peely nuts, you know, all, you know, all kinds of nuts. I, I'm a, not everybody can eat nuts, but I, I love nuts. But nuts are good. And... Um, I'm trying to think, um, a lot of times if I'm in a pinch and I'm on the road or I'm traveling, like an, I'll find a Walgreens or a Kroger or somewhere where I'm familiar with the store and get Atkins bars, but only like one. Um, and I, I steer clear of those for the most part because I'm avoiding soy and they do have soy in them. But right now I'm like, I'll be 46 this year. It's time for me to stop, like avoid soy. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, but in a pinch, I, the peanut butter granola Atkins bars, I, I still have a love for those. <laughs> so like if I'm on a road trip and there's an exit with a Kroger, you know, or a Walgreens or somewhere that I know sells them and I can pull off and grab that real quick. So that's, you know, another kind of a go-to for me. Um, anyways, yeah, I'm just, but I'm real picky about that and things have to be tested and I have to be able to know you know, I can eat safely. That's good. It sounds like you have a really good system in place then. Because you're the traveling low carb lady. <laughs> I, yes, but there's so many products to review. And that, yeah. you know, so I feel sometimes I feel like a guinea pig between the finger pricking and getting knocked in and out of ketosis and how that affects my health and my weight. But if there's a new product coming to the, like, like one of the big things right now is finding a low carb ice cream that's worth eating. It's not cheap. <clears throat> I don't know if you bought a pint of low carb ice cream lately, but it's a good thing your car doesn't run on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have lately. Yeah, so it's expensive. And I've been through, I think, I don't know, four or five brands already. 
And, um, but in addition to, you know, spending the money and then finding out you don't like it, throwing a product away, you know, or whatever, but then there's also, you know, are they keto friendly really, you know, so lots of stuff going on there. And then I had a bar recently and I've got to retest this one, so I don't want to name it yet that I had a really odd reaction to. And now I'm, I'm trying, I'm retesting it and I'm going to um, see if I can find someone else to also clean test it as well, because I had a really strange reaction to it. And I didn't know if the bar is bad or mislabeled or what, or, or if it's, I have an ingredient intolerance to one of the specific ingredients, maybe like a sensitivity. That could be. Yeah. And you do boy dairy? No, you don't, do you? Mm-mm. No, I eat the cheese. I eat all the cheese. Me too. <laughs> I love cheese. String cheese is great for throwing in the purse. Yes. And baby bells. Those little baby, baby bells. bells. Oh, yeah, with the cute little wax coating. Yes. Yeah. And you can get those at Walgreens and Starbucks. So, like, I know, you know, when I'm driving down the road, I know what I can get where. Like, I have kind of a, a list in my head. Where when I was first starting out, it was a lot of trial and error, you know. Um, but I know for sure you can get them at Walgreens and Starbucks. So, like, I just kind of keep this running list of if I ran into Walgreens, you know, and I had to grab something real quick, what would it be? It would be the nice brand macadamia nuts, string cheese, and baby bells. You know, that's super easy. Like, And then there will be other options as well, but I just know off the top of my head what my quick, quick grabs are. Ah, uh, Yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, you know, you could end up quickly grabbing something else. Yeah, no, and you don't want to fall into that trap. It's important to always have those emergency foods around. That's another reason why I like the keto crate because I could just unbox it and put them all in my car with me or in my purse so that should I miss a meal, I'm not going to grab for something I'm not supposed to eat because that's where you run into trouble. <laughs> it's like a slippery slope once you leave ketosis and you get your insulin levels up, mm. that you're hungry, and then hungry, yeah, you eat, and you're hungry again. So it yeah, snowballs. When I, when I got knocked out of ketosis, yeah, the other day, I woke up famished, and I'm not a breakfast eater. I'm like, what's for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny because I'm I'm not a breakfast eater. So speaking of the keto crate, I have the last one here actually. And I haven't dug into mine yet. Oh, you haven't? It's so um, good. Well, it's because I was traveling, for starters. I was um, I was gone for six days, and then when I got back, I had the flu and stuff. And so I didn't want to um, test products when I was um, sick because I had a steroid shot and, and things like that. So I didn't want to test products then. Anyway, there was one. There's all kinds of good stuff in here. Um, I was going to see about this. Did you try this Coco Polo bar? Oh, I love that. Yeah, that is so fantastic. It's it good. is so good. Yes. So this is one of those that has eight grams of fiber. Mm -hmm. And I so it has the inulin, too, like the Lily's chocolate. Anyway, um, it also has extract of chicory root. And I'm curious about chicory root fiber as well. So I haven't tested this one yet. But I, the one I wanted to ask you about was this. This was an oddball. Hang on. Yeah. You see it? Uh, yeah, that that was tasty. I, that was good. I think that was, uh, if I recall, that had a good amount of protein, which is, for me, it's very important to reach protein goals every day, and I'm sure it is for most people out there. So the interesting, about this, the interesting thing about this one, I was curious your take on this, because I love Keto Crate, but I know their policy is um, five net carbs max per serving, mm -hmm. and this one was seven. Oh, okay. It was seven net carbs, yeah. But um, it's, I was gonna say, including one gram of added sugar. So it has two total sugar, two grams of total sugar. But the thing that people were complaining about, not that it was seven net carbs, nobody really said anything about that, um, but that one of the, um, I was looking here, it has the prebiotic tapioca fiber. I'm not familiar with that one either. Yeah, so honey. that's just for, yeah. So this one, yeah, this one has honey in it. So people are real quick to say that's not keto. So I'm anxious to actually test this. And I'm curious else. to hear that, how that goes. Yeah. I like Mark Sisson. He, um, I hope I'm saying his last name right. He has Mark's Daily Apple. 
or the daily mm-hmm. apple dot org. Now I can't even think which one it is. Anyway, the daily apple with Mark, um, primal foods, primal kitchen. I love primal kitchen products. In fact, have you ever tried their chipotle lime mayo? No. Oh Do my I- gosh. Oh. I oh haven't tried gosh. that one. This stuff is so good. Like, if you want to make uh, bang bang shrimp or something similar to bang bang shrimp, this chipotle lime mayo mm-hmm. and a little bit of butter, like, makes the mm-hmm. best, like, a little bit tangy, spicy sauce. That's just enough kick to really be good. And, you know, when you make Parmesan chicken and you, like, coat it in mayonnaise and then Parmesan and bake it? I'm not a cook. I'm asking. Am I just saying that right for Parmesan chicken? Yeah, that's right. I haven't done that in some time, but, yeah. I've been doing crock pot cooking a lot lately. <laughs> so yeah, so if you do that chipotle lime mayo on your Parmesan chicken, it, it's that oh, it's got that flavor. And then you put the Parmesan and you just bake it. Mm. And like I like to top it with like a low carb. I have an organic marinara I really like, um, and some mozzarella when it comes out, or just boil up for a few seconds at the end. Not that I cook. Yeah, I would like to see some more ketogenic simmer sauces out there because you, I'm a, I'm a big fan of simmer sauces like from the jar, and if you see a lot of them in the grocery stores, they tend to have sugar in them. So there's a market out there. If somebody wants to create it, we need we need simmer sauces. Like what? I don't I don't know what that is since I don't cook. Like what kind of sauces? Like uh, masala, like. Uh, Tikka masala, like um, Indian simmer sauces, and um, yeah, I guess I like Indian food a lot. <laughs> so there is a. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can find it. No, I don't see it. No, I'm not seeing it. But there is like a, a Thai peanut. Um, oh, like it's a spicy Thai peanut sauce. Yes, um, I remember getting that. I think in one of the crates. Yes, and then this um, this says sweet, spicy, awesome, and I can't pronounce it. Can you see it? Sir, 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 sir. Yeah. Cool. So I mean, there's lots of, and of course, there's tons of like you know barbecue sauce and ketchup and different things like that. So I was thinking, like, you know, you could take something like that chipotle. I take the chipotle lime mayo, and if you just put a tablespoon or two in when you're, like, sautéing shrimp or vegetables or whatever, it turns into a nice cream sauce. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mayo. Any kind of mayo, actually. Um, if you just – because sometimes I want a creamy sauce. Yeah, me too. Yeah, a, or a butter cream sauce. So I'll just, you know, saute it in butter and then add the mayo and just kind of stir it in. You know what else? You know that pimento cheese they make in South Carolina? Yeah. It's that palmetto cheese, the pimento cheese with sole, it's like zero carbs. Uh-huh. It melts down into the most beautiful cheese sauce. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to think like... Not all seasons do that, that's for sure. Pardon? <laughs> Cheeses don't typically do that. They they do this cute little clump thing. Yeah, you know, like, they're all oily and stuff. But this yeah. one, and I don't know what to make with it or to put it on. Like, it's great to cook with, but I don't cook. So I actually had um, one of those Atkins TV dinners, like just chicken broccoli alfredo. Mm-hmm. And I added the pimento cheese in it and stirred it all up, and it was like this creamy chicken casserole. It was like cheesy oh, and creamy. Uh. It was just like... I was like, I don't cook, but if I could think of something to cook that needs a cheese sauce, this would be great. Oh, yeah. Where do you get those um, TV dinners then? Because I, I haven't seen those anywhere. Um, there's like three that I like. I don't like like the, the it's the Atkins ones, and I don't like the pizza. But I like the, um, the chicken broccoli alfredo, and I add things into it. Like I'll add sour cream and this pimento cheese and, and make it creamy and then add peely nuts or macadamia nuts and add the buttery crunch to it. Well, some crunch to it, yeah. Make a meal out of it. Or if I have leftover roasted vegetables, I'll throw them in there with it. Um, the other one I like it is, uh, and I can get, get these at Kroger's, I know. At Kroger's. Kroger. Okay. Anyways, um, I like the beef Merlot. It's pretty good. And there's one other one. Oh, my favorite one is the uh, crustless chicken pot pie. Okay. I'll have to look for that because, yeah, I don't, 
Well, I'm, I'm in Illinois. I don't know if we have Kroger. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm in, I'm in Minnesota. I grew up in Illinois. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> so, so you don't have to have those um, Atkins dinners shipped to you. You can get them at a, a grocery store at a Kroger. Okay. Kroger or maybe Publix or Walmart. But they're really great for quick lunches. Oh, great. Walmart has them as well. Thank you. So oh, okay. they're really great for quick lunches. Um, like when I'm at work, I, I kind of I like have to grab something quick sometimes. I don't have a lot of time, and I certainly don't have time to be meal prepping and cooking and, you know, things like that. And um, I have a full-time career. And, and then when I'm traveling, if I have, you know, a microwave in my hotel room, those are convenient. You know, so I can um, stop by a local store and, you know, just have some real food. Sometimes when I'm traveling, you know, just having a hot meal, besides restaurant food, I mean. Like, if I want to stay in my room, like if I'm working or whatever. Yeah, because hotels don't typically have kitchens, so. But they often have microwaves. At least somewhere in the hotel you can find one. Yeah, usually. Like, they usually have them in the room or down in the breakfast area or something like that. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, even like with room service, if you order that for every meal, it's like 25 bucks a pop, you know, I mean, it really adds up on you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I try to avoid that at all costs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it does. It just adds up on you. And unfortunately, like I can't eat that much food at once. Most restaurants serve entirely too much food, you know, so it's nice to have what I do. What I do at all times is try to have something on hand. That if I'm hungry right now, I can eat it right now. So if I want to cook, I can cook. If I if I need something to eat right now, there is something there that's going to prevent me from, you know, running down the road for fast food or like just calling a pizza and saying whatever I have to eat, you know. Like, so having something always is important to me. Oh um, yes, I don't you never snack. Be starving yeah yeah I don't snack but like when it's time for a meal and I'm running non-stop let's say on Mondays I work till 8 p.m. it's a long day you know and when I'm done I'm famished I just I need something to eat right now you know so, so if I didn't prepare something already it's gonna have to be you know something I can grab and, and enjoy real quick and that's important I mean that's you know just something I need to do yeah. Anyway, so tell me if you had, and we'll wrap this up because I could talk to you for like all night and then we would get any sleep. <laughs> but, um, tell me if you had one piece of advice for somebody just getting started at keto, what would you say? Well, for me personally, what has worked is just um, easing into it. Don't beat yourself up. Um, just Take your time getting into it and just let it soak in. Just try to get onto Pinterest or get onto Facebook pages and look at recipes and get ideas and um, take your time. If You don't have to go full on in the beginning. Um, and like you said, it's really good to have snacks around. Um, and it's nice to have a, a cookbook or two also if you can. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah find find your uh substitutions that work for you i mean i have had a cabbage in my refrigerator and i it i can't believe how long that thing lasts it, it doesn't it doesn't go bad somehow i don't know what's going on with cabbage but <laughs> i can turn that into noodles you know or i, I make zoodles all the time um i have a lot of cheese make sure you have if you can if you can eat dairy just make sure you're stocked with some of those staples, um, zucchini and cheese and cabbage. and. You can make such a fast meal with just those few things. Right? Yeah. That's and so butter. <laughs> like what you can throw together, you know, in one skillet even really super quick. Like if I've got some, I like baby spinach. And let me tell you, I you could not make me touch spinach prior to going keto. Now I crave it. Oh it, yes, it literally has messed up my taste buds. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, you start to not really like. I mean, if you look at a cake now, like a slice of cake now, that just ugh, like yeah. But you go to a birthday party and people are just the cake, and it's like no, that doesn't even have real ingredients. Like the the frosting is ugh, has a weird aftertaste. So. Yeah, you, you start to crave really healthy whole foods, but 
Just and I like simple. I think it's simple. it's simple. Yeah. Yeah, keep it simple. I mean, I have a jar of pickles in my refrigerator. I sometimes have a pickle when I'm craving food, you know. You know what's and, interesting? Well, it's, what's interesting, speaking of pickles, they're good for this too. But what I discovered um, a, a while back, a few years ago, is chicken broth. A cup of chicken broth. And I'm a coffee drinker, so I like oh, a, hot, yes. a hot mug. But if you just... Um, yeah. A hot mug of strong chicken broth and you add a tablespoon of butter. In the evening, I find that very soothing. It really helps me sleep. But it also kills my cravings. I could be craving chocolate, and I could have sip on a hot mug of chicken broth, and cravings are gone. Oh, yeah. I'm told pickles do the same thing. Awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. And those, now, now, now more than ever, you can find um, individual servings of um bone broth and chicken broth or whatever, somehow it's becoming more and more available maybe because people are learning that this is a good, healthy lifestyle to live. So, Yes, it's everywhere. But even just, you know, like good old-fashioned Campbell's, like your grandmother cooked with, you know, the condensed broth. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pardon me, that's what I started with. Now oh, okay. they make chicken broth. The chicken broth I really like is called roast chicken broth. And um, that's the company that makes the shakes and the collagen and all that, that I have the discount code for, but um, that they have collagen in the broth and it's nice. so good. It's like, it's like home cooked broth and I roast. found it's good to cook with. Okay. So if you're you making, making those, talking about simmer sauces or whatever, uh-huh. Yeah, so yes. they make uh, roast chicken bone broth, and they make uh, beef bone broth. So oh, wow. I don't really like to drink the beef broth, but it's really great in the crock pot. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, and it has all that collagen and stuff in it, too, which is really good. The, um, but, yeah, so the the products are readily available. The, it was not so much the case eight years ago when I first got started. There wasn't that much, you know, out there. And, um so there's a lot more available now, but I think people should take caution and should, you know, be aware. I don't think you should be an ingredient, like, junkie. Like, I mean, you know, I didn't look at the ingredients of the crap I was eating before I went keto. Yeah, I mean, you're going to scare yourself out of the diet if you just start to get all, like, crazy, crazy about it. Because you're going to be like, what am I thinking? This is too much. Forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, so in the in the beginning, when you're just first starting, just 20 net carbs max, period, and forget everything else. That's my advice. Otherwise, you will be too overwhelmed and, and too unsure, and you'll get conflicting information and advice from everybody. Um, however, when you're further into it, like we are, um, it pays to start identifying foods that are affecting your health because we both have health issues that ketosis is, is a therapeutic remedy for. And so when you're not in ketosis, you feel bad. Whereas a, a person who's just doing it to lose weight might go in and out of ketosis and maybe have keto flu would be the worst side effect for them. Right, right. Yeah. It's, I do find it interesting how people are, they get into it for uh, fat loss, but then they realize, oh, wow, my knees don't hurt anymore or my joints, they don't hurt. This, this is a good thing. And then, and then you're really motivated. <laughs> yes. You know, for me, I, I was in chronic pain. I was bedridden. I was, um, you know, in therapy a lot for my pain. Um, anyways, I, I water skied when I was younger and, but with a back injury, that's a very scary thing. But yeah. the first full year I was keto, I got back up on a water ski for the first yeah. time in 23 years. That's it was awesome. the most liberating feeling ever, you know, like I'm just entering my 40s and, and having to realize I'm never going to get to do those things. Not only am I doing those things again, I'm doing things I never even considered doing before. I'm rock climbing. I'm, I did a 10-mile hike, you know, and like oh, we're talking some serious inclines. I thought I was going to die coming back out. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, you know, I'm having fun. I can, I can wear four inch heels and I can dance for hours in them with a back injury. That's saying a lot, you know? Um, yes. Anyway, so it's been a real save for me in terms of quality of life. That's for sure. But I was like most people, I started to lose, I, I started it to lose weight. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
So everybody's been pretty quiet tonight, and unless my little thing on this end is not working and I'm not seeing your comments, I did see two of your comments, so thank you for those. Um, but if you guys have any questions or if you're watching the replay of this, just pop your questions in. If you want any of my discount codes, just leave them in. This is Julie of WomenOnKeto.com. Hello! And I'm <laughs> TravelingLowCarb.com, and we were just having a fun chat and wanted to invite you to join in. So um, I will see you guys back in the group, and I'll be back live to do some more Q&A soon. Have a great Bye. rest of the day or night. Bye, Julie. Bye, Lynn Terry. <laughs>